looks like we're live what is going on everyone hope you're all doing well this was announced you know just a couple hours ago so i'm doing a a spring lesson on saturday on the other channel american english with this guy but i want to do a dry run today it's another way we say practice so i want to do a dry run today just put that up dry run just in case you know things go poorly things don't go well you know it'll be on this smaller channel and only a few people will see me mess up <laughs> the ones that know me best right cecilia has been around for a long time welcome cecilia argentina's in the house i saw ivana in here Looks like school was done early for her today in Poland. Yeah, I'm not at school today because we had another outbreak. And so I got to teach from home today and my day is done. We and uh, It's almost done. We end at 11 or 12. Students didn't need any help. So, yeah. so I said, why don't we just go live today, practice a little bit this afternoon I'm going for my second uh, vaccination shot. I need to be careful about what I say. So my second vaccination, and I am getting the Pfizer one. And that one, you are supposed to get less sick on the second one. The Moderna one, I've heard people have gotten quite sick. So hopefully it won't be so bad for me today, but... I'm getting all of my lessons ready today for tomorrow in case I just don't feel well enough, but I can, I can teach from home tomorrow too. So yeah, thank you. I want to thank you. I think it'll go pretty well. And then Jamie, my wife, she's going to get it tomorrow. Her second shot. We're like a day apart. So today I want to go over just a couple terms for spring and I think I know everyone in the chat where they're from. Not sure, but if you are new, if you don't mind, just, just put where you're from. I know Ivana from Poland. Mega is from India. Cecilia is here from Argentina. I thought I saw Elena here as well. I believe she is from South Korea, I think. But it would be nice to know uh, where everyone is from. Also, how long have you been studying English? Because some of this might get a little advanced. I think the first couple slides that I'll show today, it's not too bad. So, but we will talk about some, some pretty advanced vocabulary a little bit later on. On Saturday's uh, live stream, it'll be a little longer and some of the words will be a little bit more difficult, I think. Try to challenge you a little bit. I'm not sure if you saw the video I put up on the other channel today. Someone from Poland, Alex English, uh, gave me a great idea. He was wondering, in Poland, there's no difference between black sheep and bad apples. But I thought, you know, in English, there actually is. And one is worse than the other. Not my much, but a little bit. And I introduced the word ostracize in that lesson, meaning to like leave out. So if little kids ostracize one of their friends on the playground, that friend is probably having a pretty bad day. They probably feel pretty bad. Yeah, I know. I understand that some of you, I know Cecilia and Ivana have been studying English for a long time. So that advanced vocabulary can be really helpful because they're already at a really high level. I hope ostracized is new for everyone. Ostracized. You can sound really smart when you use a word like that in English. Ostracized. So black sheep of the family, they are often ostracized by the other family members. Not always. But what I would love to do is play a video for you. It's it's rather short. But since we are talking about spring today, 
I wanted to show you what spring looked like in my part of the world just a couple weeks ago. And I want to talk about why spring is my second least favorite season. After this video, you might know why. This is one reason why in spring there's so much melting snow. It's making pretty much a river. Now that was from my school a couple weeks ago, right outside of my school. When I left the building, I was like, oh, springtime, all of the melting snow. I know in Poland, we have very similar weather. Probably in Argentina, unless you're in the mountains, unless you're in the Andes, you might not have to worry as much about the springtime. But here, it can get really, really wet. And you might need your galoshes. We'll talk about that word uh, in a little bit. I think we talk about that one today. So right before this live stream, I went outside and I wanted to show you what spring is looking like now. It's The sun was actually out a minute ago. When I filmed this, the sun wasn't out, but it is starting to look a little bit more like spring out there. Springtime where I live here in the northern part of the United States, there are some birds chirping. You might be able to hear them. There are some patches of green grass, not too many. And I did see a couple purple flowers starting to sprout, starting to emerge from the ground, starting to bloom, starting to blossom. But there's still a lot of dead things around and it will be a few more weeks before everything fully comes back to life. So that last thing you saw was what we call a flower bed. It's a, it's a rather big one, but Jamie will usually plant some things in that flower bed. It's all brown right now, but in a couple of weeks, it'll look a little bit better. So let's uh, get into some of the vocabulary. I have made a Google slide to try to help illustrate some of these difficult words. So you'll have the word or the saying along with the picture that I hope will help you. Zhao, I believe. Zhao is here from Brazil. I'm, I'm having trouble saying the uh, that J, that nasally J. Uh, Rod, the Brazilian English teacher, has tried to help me. Oh, Cecilia, I'm sorry to hear about that. The black sheep of the family. I, I know that Pablo is your brother, right? So he, he leaves you out of some family gatherings. He ostracizes you. No. Ivana, it's snowing? Oh, that's rough. That's rough. I'm hoping that spring is coming sooner rather than later for you in Poland. So let's take a look at some of these uh, spring vocabulary words. The first one I want to talk about is a saying you will often hear, and that is spring showers bring May flowers. Spring showers bring May flowers. That's April. April showers bring May flowers. And that is something that's very commonly said in the United States, because in April, it's often very rainy. So we often look forward to May because we get a lot of water, a lot of rain in April. A lot like um, that first video I showed you where there was a literal river going through the parking lot at my school. So we'll often get a lot of wet weather in April, but luckily, May is when all of the flowers start blooming. We'll talk about blooming or blossoming. We use blossom and bloom pretty much the same way. But where I live, to get through April, we will often tell ourselves this. April showers bring May flowers. 
if we can get through April and all the wetness that is April, May is usually a much better month. Usually. Usually. All right, the next one here, mud season. We say that where I live. Maybe in Poland, they'll say that too. Mud season. It isn't spring. It's mud season. And mud season is another name for spring in places that get a lot of snow during the winter. Because of all that melting snow, it usually just becomes mud. Just a muddy mess. Like that first video I showed. And um, it can make you really hate spring. At least me. Elena. Where, where are you from, Elena? Is it, is it Korea? Am I correct? I hope I haven't forgotten. I think it, I think it is South Korea. But mud season. I need to... I don't know if I still have it, but we actually have some chocolate milk made by a local dairy here in Maine. And during the spring, on their label, they will change it from... I think it's called Oakhurst Milk. Oakhurst is the name brand. And they'll change it to mud season. I think I shared that on Instagram a few weeks ago. But chocolate milk, they turn it to like mud season milk. Just because it's so muddy around here. To get rid of all that snow, it has to melt. We could say thaw. I will talk about thaw a little bit later. It's a little different from melt. But when the snow melts, it just leaves behind a whole lot of wetness not very fun in my opinion where i used to live in the southern united states spring was one of the best seasons it got really hot where i lived in alabama but the spring march april early may it was really nice and there was a lot of green that was coming back not so much brown Now, where I live, maybe in Poland as well, summer, beautiful. Fall, beautiful. Winter, spring, a little rough. You might get some cabin fever. We talked about that last week on the other channel. If you were there for that um, lesson, get cabin fever from being cooped up for so long. Oh, Russia. Okay. Okay. Okay, Elena, Russia. I will try to remember that. Nice, nice. Learning Korean and English. So you might be trilingual. Trilingual would be able to speak three languages. Unfortunately, right now, I am monolingual. I can only speak one language. Trying to learn Italian, though. Trying to learn Italian. So Elena says she would love to live in South Korea. Yeah, in my class last just yesterday, we were talking about how the United States, like we're a pretty modern country. But when it comes to places like Seoul, South Korea, or Tokyo, Japan, it's like, uh, we might be a little behind the times. We might be a little behind the times. I think that's exactly what we said behind the times. Another way to say, you know, you're a little bit slow, maybe with the uh, the technology too, we're, we're a little behind the times when it comes to Tokyo and Seoul. Yeah, I would love to visit. Um, I think it would be a little bit scary though, seeing I don't speak Japanese or Korean yeah, Ivana and Ivana is a, a teacher. So I think she's like me and we don't actually have to go to school in the summer. We can relax a little bit because the school year is actually pretty tough. So that's mud season. And the next one I want to talk about here is uh, blossom. Blossom. Now, if you look up the difference between blossom and bloom, I think there is a scientific difference, but if you're speaking regular everyday English, we will often use those two words interchangeably, interchangeably. 
And I'm going to use both blossom and bloom as like right there, that flower. It was at one time just a seed and then it was just that green stem. But that is when the flower starts to blossom or it starts to bloom. And you can use blossom as a noun or a verb. So that you might call, oh, that's the flower's blossom right there, that part of it. And we would also call these little things petals. You could call those petals. But you could also say the flower has blossomed. The flower has blossomed. Or the flowers are beginning to blossom. Same thing here. Same thing. The flowers are beginning to bloom. So that's when they turn from seeds and they get that little stem and then they finally get something pretty at the end. We might call that it's blossom. That's the blossom of the flower or it's starting to bloom. Both of those words work pretty well. And the next one, galoshes galoshes you might hear these called rain boots as well but people will call them galoshes an example sentence with galoshes might be i forgot my galoshes and now my shoes are all muddy so if you don't want to use rain boots you can use galoshes they're the same thing and it's pretty fun i think to say galoshes galoshes it might be german it sounds like it might be german i'm not sure if it is or not but we use it here in english and if you've been studying english for any length of time you know that we will just take words from other languages and borrow them speaking of japanese karaoke i think that's a japanese word english yeah we'll just use it we don't need to change it. Same with galoshes. Is that German? I wish Anya was here. She could tell us if it's German. The next one. Oh, these two, some of my favorites. So polywog is the first one, but we'll go right into tadpole because polywogs and tadpoles those are the same exact thing. And if you look at that little thing in the middle, that's a tadpole. That's a polywog. The same thing. It's those. It's so you have like the eggs and then you have the tadpoles or the polywogs and then you have frogs. So tadpoles and polywogs are the two words we use to describe those things in between an egg and one of my students is joining my zoom right now hey boy it's a wednesday we have half days for zooms that poor boy he, he doesn't he doesn't come to class a lot of times when we do have class that's why he's so confused so i like the word tadpole just fine but i kind of like polywog a little better that along with galoshes, is just fun to say. Polywog, tadpole, you take your pick. They're both the same thing. What is it? Oh, okay, Ivana. That sounds British to me. Wellingtons. Is that how you say that? Wellingtons? We don't say that. Yeah, in the United States. But I bet that sounds like a British thing. So I don't think most Americans would know without context, you know, like, oh, it's raining out. I need to grab my Wellingtons. Now that, that makes me think it is rain boots there. But if you just go into a store and say, Hey, do you have any Wellingtons? They might not know. So that might be a British thing. I think. Yeah. Blossoming. You, you definitely can. If we go back to that last one, yeah, so you could um, you could say, oh, I love it right now. The flowers are all blossoming. 
Yeah, you sure can. Did I use that as an example? I think I use it in a different way. Yeah, I said to blossom. But yes, you can. we could change that right there and say the flowers are beginning. No, we couldn't. But um, blossoming. Yeah, you wouldn't have to put the beginning. You could just say the flowers are blossoming now. Definitely can. Or if it already happened, oh, the flowers have blossomed. They must have done that overnight. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can definitely use that. Oh, yeah, Anya. Is it Anya? I don't know if it's German. Is, is Anya in the... I don't think Anya is in the uh, the chat right now. Must be British. Could be. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, we don't use it in the United States. I've never actually heard of that. Oh, is that... Okay, Luke, English addict. Thank you. So is that the shortened version of Wellington's? Gotta get my wellies. I forgot my wellies. Don't want my feet to get wet. It's my best British accent today. The best I can do for the British accent. Forgot my gloshes. My feet are all muddy. Yeah, and so polywogs, tadpoles, same thing. Same thing. Next one. Love this. They haven't started yet, but we will say peepers in the spring and peepers are simply frogs but in the spring you know they're all looking for boyfriends and girlfriends to do that mating thing so you will hear them peeping in the pond where i grew up we used to catch tadpoles pollywogs we used to catch them and bring them to our house and wait until they turned to frogs but you always knew there were going to be some tadpoles and pollywogs in the pond when you heard the peepers. When you heard the peepers. Peepers can often be heard in the spring near a pond. If you want to um, use a sentence with actually two prepositional phrases at the end. We don't need to get too much into grammar, but near is a preposition and in is a preposition so that sentence can be made a little longer with those pre prepositional phrases but you can take out near a pond that prepositional phrase can be taken out the sentence will still make sense peepers can often be heard in the spring you could actually take out in the spring the other prepositional phrase it just adds more detail. Peepers can often be heard. All right, nice. But what you're doing with those prepositional phrases, you're just adding detail. Let's see, check the chat here. Oh, Miho. Miho from Japan is here. You must have heard us. We were talking about Japan earlier. Welcome, Miho. Hope you're doing well. Oh. It, it, we're almost done here. I actually have to get going. As I said um, earlier, I am getting my second shot for my vaccination. So I need to leave pretty soon. This is just a preview of what I'll be talking about more of in um, the live lesson on Saturday. So this is a great question, Zhao. This is a great question. So I actually did a lesson. I wish I could link it here a really good lesson on the different bodies of water that we have in English. So if you know what an ocean is, which I would imagine you do, we have the Atlantic ocean in English, we have the Pacific ocean. So those are really big. So if they're a little bit smaller, or quite a bit smaller, we might call it a lake. So a lake is smaller than an ocean. And even smaller than a lake is a pond. So a pond is just a really small lake. And yeah, frogs mostly hang out in ponds. Not as much the lakes, but the ponds. If, hmm, if before Saturday I can make a video where the peepers hang out, I will. But I have not heard any peepers 
yet this spring. Maybe it's too early for them. I'm not quite sure. But let's see. One more. Let's do one more slide, and then I must get going. This last one is Peeps. Peeps. This is a popular Easter candy. Peeps. And when I say popular, I need to be careful because not a lot of people like eating them. It's not popular to eat peeps, but it is popular to buy peeps for your kids. So if your family celebrates Easter, you might get them peeps and they will probably not like them. So most people do not like the idea of eating peeps, but they are marshmallow inside and they have sugar all over them. I actually have uh, for Saturday, I'm going to make another video where I try some peeps. So hang on just a second. Let me slide over here and get the peeps that I have. Be right back. So we got some peeps. They were discounted after Easter. All the candy that is left over is discounted. And that means you can buy it for a cheaper price. And I think it was Jamie. My wife. She picked up some discounted Easter candy. And let's take a look at these peeps. This... Oh, a little bit of a glare. That is a root beer float. Peeps. Just let me know in the comments if you would. Have you heard of root beer? And if not, I can describe it. Or root beer float. If you don't know what a root beer float is. I will try these for Saturday. And then this one. Hot tamale peeps. They're made with cinnamon. Usually on the outside of the peep, it's just sugar, like grainy sugar. But there, there must be some root beer flavoring and there is some cinnamon. So no idea. Okay, no idea, Jao says. Before Coke, before Coca-Cola and Pepsi, I think there was root beer. It's a really difficult taste to describe they even sell root beer candy these little root beer barrels uh, but it is a type of soda old type of soda way before coca-cola you had root beer and a root beer float is actually really good in the summer a root beer float is when you have a glass of root beer and then you put a dollop of vanilla ice cream in it dollop That is a, yeah, it's, hey, Miho, I see that question. I will get right to it. Um, dollop. This might be a, a little advanced term right there, but it's like a scoop of ice cream. But I think a really good word to describe putting some ice cream into a glass is you can say, I put a dollop of ice cream in the glass. So that might be uh might be a new word for some of you uh more advanced English speakers. Dollop. It's a good one to know. Yeah, in peeps in the United States, we always associate peeps with Easter. 100%. And a lot of people who celebrate Easter in the United States, it's not a religious holiday. To some, very much it is. But to others, the Easter Bunny will visit their house. I think I made a, Miho might have seen, I think I made a members video for Easter. And I don't know where the Easter Bunny came from. But some people in the United States celebrate Easter. And um, the Easter Bunny will bring eggs to your house. Yeah, and bunnies, they don't even lay eggs. So I... I don't know how that started, but in my house growing up, we did celebrate Easter. My parents sometimes bought me peeps, and I don't think I ever ate them. 
my brother and my sister didn't really eat them either. But I must go. I am so glad that you could join me. I hope you learned a little something. Let's get that off the... I thought that was uh, one of my sentences. That's Miho's question. We can leave Miho's question up there. Yeah, I hope that answered your question, Miho. Peeps, Easter. Peeps are a popular Easter candy. Yeah, they are. I hope you learned a little something. Hey, join me Saturday where I will have more slides. We'll still talk about spring. And uh, hopefully teach you a little bit of English. Yeah, Cecilia, thanks for joining. So glad uh, you could join on such short notice. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I think I always say adios, amigos, which is Spanish. So why don't I say that right now? Adios, 